All right, guys, I'm gonna do a little video on my Humvee trailer. Uh, this is a M1102 Humvee trailer. Uh, it is all aluminum. They are about 1,300 pounds. Um, a lot of people think these are super heavy because they're big army trailers, but they're really not. They're all aluminum and uh, pretty easy to maneuver around. Quite light, actually, so a uh, perfect platform for a off-road camping trailer and uh, gear hauler and we use it for kayaks and mountain bikes and just hauling stuff around the mountains and uh, works great. So I bought this from a buddy of mine who purchased it through Gov Planet, which is a government auction site where you can buy these things from the military and then um, you have to register them as a as a uh, personal vehicle, obviously, if you want to get license plates on them. But anyway, this one's been registered in Colorado and has a Colorado title and plate, so that works good. Uh, so what I did with this one is, when I got it home, the first thing I did is take off the Humvee military bead locks because they are extremely heavy. Um, and I uh, installed some AEV wheels with some 37 inch ProComp XMT2 tires. Those are really nice tires. I'm a big fan of those. Uh, then the next thing I did is I refabricated the pintle hitch setup here. So normally the pintle ring is uh, very close to the surge brake setup. And the problem with that is if you have a swing out tire carrier on your vehicle or a camper that you want to open, the original setup doesn't really allow you to open up the back of the camper uh, without unhooking the trailer. So I refabricated this whole setup and uh, made it very adjustable. So you can adjust it for different vehicles uh, as far as ride height um, or vehicle height. And then I still maintain the surge brake. So the surge brake still works. And I extended it 18 inches so I can now actually leave it hooked up to the truck and open up the tire carrier and um, the camper and still be able to access the camper without having to unhook the trailer. So that was a big deal. Love that. Works great. Uh, okay, then with the trailer itself, I took it over to Linex and I had them Linex the whole interior of the trailer. So the whole inside is completely Linexed all the way over the rails. Turned out really nice. Um, after the Linex, I cleaned up the trailer, I sanded it and I painted it with a really nice gray Rust-Oleum. And this is actually just spray paint. I didn't take it to a body shop or have it professionally painted. I just made sure it was scuffed and cleaned and painted it myself. And it turned out pretty sweet, I think, um, for, a, for a rattle can job. And it's so far been very durable. I haven't really taken this thing out too much yet, but no chipping or peeling and the paint is very, uh, very high quality, so it's holding up good. All right, uh, then we have a ARB awning. So that's an aluminum cased eight foot ARB awning. When that awning is deployed, there is a tent that will zip onto it. You can see it actually on the floor right there uh, in the bag. And that tent will zip onto the awning. So we'll have a completely separate room, which is about eight foot square. And depending on the height of the awning, we'll determine the how tall it is, but it should be, it's about six and a half feet. So perfect for uh, an extra room and a place to keep bikes or set up your bathroom or whatever. Um, and then inside the trailer, I have some pretty cool stuff going on. I've got a 40, 40 gallon water tank uh, with a two gallon accumulator and a C-flow pump. And that uh, actually allows you to have extra water for the camper as well as spray off your mountain bikes or kayaks if they're full of sand on the bottom or whatever you can clean stuff up and just carry extra water which is good uh, that's also got a Leitner crossbar on the floor which is mounted to the floor there's also one on the front wall so that gives you a nice place to uh, install fork mounts to carry mountain bikes uh, and secure whatever kind of gear you want. So that's pretty cool. Um, on the trailer itself, I installed a Leitner. Um, this is a Leitner Designs rack. And it actually came off of my Ram truck 
before we put the camper on it. So it's a short bed Ram 2500 application. I had to order, I should say I had to talk Leitner into selling me crossbars that were seven feet wide so I could span the, the width of the trailer because these trailers are pretty wide. Um, so I cut them down to size, I had them powder coated, and then I got three crossbars because I do have a solar setup in the trailer so I wanted an extra one so I could span the solar panel. Um, also inside the trailer there is a diesel heater. So this is one of those Chinese diesel heaters. I did a video on this thing a while back and it's been really awesome. Uh, but what I did with this is, is kind of interesting is I they usually have the fuel tank mounted on top of the heater so it wouldn't have fit underneath these Leitner boxes and on the fender. I wanted it on the fender so I could run the exhaust underneath and run it out the back underneath the trailer. Um, so I actually cut this whole thing apart, refabricated the, the housing that the heater is in and I, I made it so that it actually fits underneath and um, as you can see there's no fuel tank on it anymore which used to be on the top uh, section uh, so the fuel tank is now one of these Rotopax tanks so this one here actually has two gallons of diesel fuel I know it's not yellow um, and then it's got a uh, pipe that goes all the way down to the bottom to draw fuel comes out through the filler and then that hose goes into one of these Leitner boxes. The Leitner box houses the fuel pump and the control panel. Let's see if I can get a, there you go, a little bit of a glare. Uh, anyway, control panel, fuel pump, all the guts that used to be in the, in the uh, heater shell are now inside there. And there's still plenty of room for storing stuff. I've got the power leads going out underneath. So I can either run this thing off of the solar setup that's in the trailer, or I can run it off my Goal Zero generator if I want to do that, or if the battery happens to be dead for some reason. So this is a solar charger. Uh, there's a breaker. We got a distribution box with a bunch of different um, options for switches. So there's a switch panel. This one I have it set up right now to run the water pump and also uh, the heater. And then I'm going to add a little bit more lighting to the trailer. So I've got some open switches there that I can still use. So that's kind of cool. All right. And then in the trailer, you'll see the heat duct runs into this third Leitner box. So that comes out of the heater, blows hot air up into this box. And then this box has... Um, a heat duct in it. This is actually a dryer vent or dryer duct or whatever, but there's a 90 degree elbow in there. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, and then this expandable, this is actually an eight foot expandable pipe. So I can run this into the tent when the tent is set up and allows us to have a nice warm heated tent anytime we want some heat. So that's nice. Uh, what else? So we got the water system, we got the heater, we got the awning. I kind of went over everything, I think. Oh, um, on the other side, I do have another Rotopax. If we want to run some uh, extra gas for dirt bikes or generators or whatever. And then this side has a bigger Leitner box. Inside this box, we normally keep our life jackets for kayaking and stuff, but also there's the vent for the water tank and then the filler for the water tank is right there. I figure that would be better to keep it inside and lockable so that way your water source or your water um, inlet is secure. And then here's the water system and the water tank. I have it set up so I can recirculate water. That way if it's getting kind of cold and then I don't want it to freeze, I can just turn it on to recirculate. It'll keep the water just pumping and circulating. And then there's just the outlet right here. So you can spray off your bikes or kayaks or gear or whatever uh, you want, or just have extra water to fill the camper with if you want. All right, so that's the Humvee trailer. Um, 
I'm gonna get away from the corner here, try to get you kind of a good walk around of it. And uh, yeah, I'm excited. We're taking this thing to Zion and Moab and Vegas here in uh, actually next week. So very excited to take it on its maiden voyage, which will be an actual longer trip. We've had it around here in Colorado and uh, hauled kayaks and stuff with it, but this will be its first uh, kind of cross country trip. So I'm excited. If you have any questions or you want any specific information on it, let me know. Uh, otherwise, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks, guys.